Hey, hi, hello. I got all of my son's crib sheets for free and I hate them. So let's make some fresh ones. This is really good if you are gifting something to a new parent, um, cause it's a really unusual gift, but you can make it really custom to go with the decor of the nursery. Cause remember when they're babies, the decor is for the parent. If they're older, you can take them to the fabric store and choose the one that they won't let go of because that, that was what happened with the dogs. Now, if you're buying fabric off the shelf and it's 45 inches wide, great. That means that you're going to need about 68 inches, which is just shy of two yards. So if you buy two yards, of fabric you're fine now i personally plan on making matching pillowcases once he is big enough to actually use a pillow and you're going to need a little bit extra for that so if you want to do the matching pillowcase you need about three quarters of a yard so two and three quarters of a yard or you can just round up to three yards in case you make a mistake you're also going to need about two three yards of elastic i went with uh three eighths inch because that was the cheapest option Okay, first we have to do a little bit of math but if you have a standard crib size meaning you did not buy your crib at ikea this is the same as your math now a standard crib is 27 and a half inches by 51 inches by six inches. This is your mattress size, okay? We want it to go all over. And then remember it has to go down through like the depth of the mattress and then wrap around the other side by at least a little bit. And then on the other side, we'll have like an elastic uh, on the inside so that it, it keeps it tight. If you pick your fabric out of the quilting section, which is what I did, it's going to be 45 inches wide. Now that works out well for us because then we only have to measure it this way before we cut because you're not gonna be able to get anything wider than this. And if for some reason you have fabric that's wider than that, or like you're like turning something else into a crib sheet, 45 inches is how wide you're gonna cut it. So imagine if you will, this is our fabric from above uh, before we do any stitching. We know that it's 45 inches wide in total. We want the crib itself to be 28 inches. I rounded up from 27 and a half. This leaves us with a total of 17 inches of fabric remaining divided by two is eight and a half. So this is going to be eight and a half, eight and a half. We want these to be squares. So these will also be eight and a half, eight and a half. And the same will be true over here, eight and a half, eight and a half. So the question is, how big is this piece? It's going to be the width of our standard crib mattress, which is 51 inches. So then how big is this grand total? It's going to be whatever 51 plus 17 is 68 inches wide. So we're going to cut a piece of fabric that is 68 inches long by 45 inches wide because that's the width of our current fabric. Now you've already pre-washed your fabric because of course you have because this is an item that's going to get washed a lot. So you pre-washed your fabric which does mean you unfortunately have to press it first, sorry. If you're using quilter's cotton you want a really hot iron and turn the steam all the way up. Fold your fabric in half, hot dog style. If it's not square, even it up. Measure out your 68 inches along the folded edge and try to make sure that it's being, you know, behaving itself. Line up your cut so it's nice and straight and go ahead and cut it at 68 inches. While you still have it folded in half, we're going to go ahead and cut out the corners. Remember, we wanted it to be eight and a half inches. It's a square. So we want eight and a half inches taken off at each of the corners, not your folded side, your salvage side. Eight and a half, eight and a half. Repeat at the other end so that it's all four corners. Remember, salvage side, not your folded side. You should have exactly like our drawing, nice big rectangle with squares cut out of each of the corners. These are where we're gonna put our seams. Modern Jessica, why are you awake? Now I will be doing French seams on these corners so that it uh, lasts the longest and has the least amount of fraying. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in our corners like this. We're gonna put the wrong sides together for each of these four corners. You're gonna sew that with like a quarter inch seam. You don't want a big seam here, just a little bit. So like a quarter inch seam, do that for all four of the corners. We're going to go ahead and trim these seams. Yeah, we're going to trim them. I'm using pinking shears because I have some. We don't want to get too close to the actual seam line because we don't want to accidentally cut it. And I made these pretty narrow seams. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So you're going to trim your seam and then you're going to flip it so that you have the right sides together. And you're just going to go ahead and stitch this again. So second seam 
on top of that and just make sure that you catch everything that you did um, all of your first team inside it so it's like a little casing and that way it is going to have a really hard time fraying and it should last for a long time you could press this first and you probably should but i put my ironing board away because small children and ironing boards don't mix so we're going to finger press it and then stitch thank you the last step now that all your corners is done is to just make a case for the elastic and that's what's going to actually secure it to the crib so on the wrong side of the fabric you're going to fold over about a quarter inch and press it and then you're going to fold over a bit more depending on how wide your elastic is and then you're going to stitch along the edge here and that's going to make your elastic casing very importantly hi i love you too dog 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 now that i've cleaned out the cracker crumbs and it's the next day let's do this again so you're gonna fold it over a quarter inch and then five eighths of an inch. And the reason I'm doing five eighths instead of half of an inch is because I want the seam itself to actually have half an inch between it and the fold. So I want that little extra eighth of an inch just to make sure that, um, that I'm not gonna have anywhere where the elastic like barely fits through or like gets really tight. So we're gonna do quarter inch and then five eighths of an inch. You can use a ruler, but I'm using a hem gauge. I find it's a little bit easier to use. They're not expensive. If you're going to be sewing on a regular basis, I definitely would put this in your toolbox. Remember to mark a no sew zone. That's just like a, like, you know, like two inches or so wide that uh, that's where we're going to put the elastic in. That tells me to stop and I'll just start at the other side of my no sew zone. So we'll start about here. Time to add the elastic. Start in your no sew zone and work it all the way around. If you were using a pre-cut length, make sure that you secure the end so that it doesn't run away and follow you through and then you have to do it again. Secure the elastic at the end. I just went ahead and pushed it into my safety pin and then distribute the fabric so it's even-ish all the way around. When you're ready to sew, Go ahead and take it carefully out of your safety pin. It will try to run away, so hold on tight. And then you're going to lay it on top of itself. Trying to make sure that we don't rotate it. So it stays nice and flat. And then overlap it by, you know, like an inch, two inches. Straight stitch around in a box. Pull the elastic tight so the fabric is flat and then close the channel. 